I've made a video on this before, and I um, just want to let you guys know that um, I'm going to add to this video a couple more things. Uh, for those of you guys who want to do something to modify your engine to make it run cooler. I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the ideas that I've thrown around for the for years. Some of them I haven't never done, but I'm sure that they would work. Um, and ways to get the engine to run a bit cooler. I mean, number one, if you're building your engine right now, stick with low compression. Um, that will help you. Low compression could be between 6 and 7 to 1. Okay. If you're running low, low compression like that, it will help your engine run. You will lose a lot of power, but you will get a lot, the engine will run quite a bit cooler by doing that. Um, number two, always run premium fuel in your VW. That's just a standard. So uh, some of these things that I built can run on regular gas, um, but... Uh, you know, unless you really, really are an extremely knowledgeable person in VWs, um, you shouldn't even be thinking about running regular anything other than the premium. And you just have to really, really know how to engineer your engine different to do that. So, one of the one of the key things you can do um, if you're either building your engine or you are in the air, you're available to to work on it, you want to do some things because maybe it's. Uh, let's talk about what first of all is hot for a VW. Um, it depends on the humidity level. If it's really really high humidity level, sometimes even this temperature will be too hot for a VW. But typically, 96 degrees, anything above that, um, you're driving your VW in that temperature will um, for for any long period of time will actually probably give you some sort of overheating issue like vapor lock or uh, you know a lot of different things that happen I've seen people say there's there's a couple different types of vapor locks there's vapor lock from the intake manifold temperature and there's vapor lock from the fuel line temperature and the fuel line temperature one will make your engine not run at all um, the one from the intake manifold will make it not idle not idle so okay so back up again what was I just saying <laughs> hang on one second let me think okay so let's talk again about the modifications you can make um, you know I've already said to make sure you have all your holes sealed up on this tin make sure you have the seal all the way around if you're not running uh, the heater boxes you need to have these things completely sealed here on both sides and also these things are you notice I have foil tape it's been painted over but I do have foil tape over those foil tape is not duct tape it's different foil tape look it up on on Google so uh, one of the things you can do to make your engine run cooler um, is to run what they call a full flow uh, uh, heat, uh, cooling system for your oil. You know, remember your number one thing to prevent engine heat running hot is your heads. Your head temperature is number one. Number two is oil. Just so you know, number one is heads. We're going to talk about that in a second. But you can put a you can talk to a VW shop about putting a fitting in the side here. And running a separate oil cooler in addition to the one that's inside your fan shroud, depending on which style you have. Um, uh, oh, yeah. And another thing I wanted to say real quick, you can put it and you want to put that up over to the side of your transaxle. Do not put it over the fan. Nothing covering that fan. That fan needs to be wide open. Um, there's another thing that you want to remove. And... You know, only I think it was they they called it the I forget what it was called. Um, but there's little flappers in some of them. I mine are all gone. I don't have any of those in my fan shrouds. But original VWs. In fact, I haven't had one. Every time I see one in there, I just take it out automatically. So I didn't think about putting this in the video the first time. Was there's a flapper with a uh, rod 
that goes down in a temperature um, thing. Take all that crap out. Goodbye. Okay. So if you have those little flappers, you know, in there, just take every bit of that out. That stuff's just going to cause you a problem one day. That that uh, thermostat's going to go bad, and you're not going to have any air on your cylinder heads or or on your cylinders, and you're going to seize. So that's um, that's a no-no. Don't keep that piece on there at all. Just chuck it. Okay, that's one thing we used to, you know, a lot of people go, well, chuck it. We'll save it for later. Whatever. You want to save it for later, go for it. I've seen people buying these things at the swap meet because they want it to be original. It's like, okay, well, I guess I'll see you on the side of the road. So anyway, another thing is pump that main jet up. Typically, most of the 1600 dual ports are 135 main jet now. This is what you really need. They came with a 115. So your main jet's right underneath here um, in your carburetor. You probably have to take your carburetor off to put it back in. But um, it's under here, straight under here. You want to take that main jet out and make sure it's a 135 is typically what you want. If you have low compression, you can run a little bit lower than that. If you have a single port, sometimes it's a little bit lower than that. But uh, you can use 135 as a standard. Um, 130, 135, those are usually the numbers. Um, one of mine has a 125. That's because I have a really big cam, and it's overcammed. Um, and it makes it run really cool um, but those are extreme situations I'm just telling you it's typically 130 135 so on your main jet um, go 135 and if it seems like it's running way too rich then slam a 130 in you know or bring it down uh, it's better the richer the better until it won't run you know properly okay so that's a that's another thing now there's another modification you can do that works really well and I I'm gonna have people that are gonna tell me that this does not work but I'm gonna tell you I have videos of this bus right here doing 80 miles an hour for more than an hour and I have not burned this engine up it's 1776 it does not use any oil it does not leak oil now isn't that strange well, but I'm also running 344 gears. There's a lot, a lot of engineering gone into getting this bus to go that fast, okay, and not overheat. Um, one of the things that is the big giant cam that's in here. I mean, no, it's not your. It's not an angle 110. It's not an angle 120. It's like I don't know. It's probably I think it's about 580 lift. In 600 duration, something crazy like that. Okay, I don't know. It doesn't have specs on it, but it's really, really big. If you guys, cam guys, that's a huge cam, huge. So, and it's on a single port. Uh, it was on the engine when I got it. So, and I thought, well, what the hell? I'm going to run it, and, and it's. I got a little bit too low compression for it. I think my compression when we messed up is in the sixes. So, um, I, it's probably 6.8, something like that, 6.5. Um, and so uh, with that cam, it just, it's low P as hell. It sounds bitching. So uh, I like it. <laughs> That's all. It does use a lot of fuel. <laughs> this thing gets about 11 miles a gallon. So anyway, um, the sacrifice, but it does not run hot. It will do just extreme speeds, um, which is great for a bus. So but I'm uh, one of the things that's on this engine too, and I run on, Every engine that I can. My belt's really worn, I know. I'm going to replace it. Uh, if you're noticing the video, I'm, I've got guys going, hey, man, you got you don't have clamps on here. Or you got the fuel filter in the wrong place. You should have it on the suction side instead of the pressure side. You know what? I've never had one of these things fail, regardless of whether it was there or it was clamped in here. Um, as long as you have clamps on it, usually that's not a problem. But maybe some of the new Chinese ones will. Um, so thanks for noting that. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about uh, this engine, what I did to get this thing to run this cool, is underneath the cylinders, there's typically a little plate that goes underneath your push rods. There's a little plate of metal under there that uh, diverts the air uh, to your head and also goes around the cylinders. Um, you take those off and you replace it with something called cool tin. 
Um, and guys will tell you right now, I'm going to tell you guys say, oh no, those things don't work. It's not original part for VW. It doesn't blah, blah, blah. Why do you think they put them on Porsches? Why don't you think they put them on airplanes? Why do you think that they put them on squarebacks if they don't work? Okay. Uh, it was, okay. Why do they not put them on these is because back in the sixties, they had better fuel engines did not run as hot as they do now. Um, we have a lot more alcohol in our fuel now. Um, those are all things that have changed. We have unleaded fuel. We don't have lead anymore. Okay, so that's why VW did not put those in there. They didn't need them. Now we do. The Cool 10 actually do work because how they do is they meter the amount of air going through your cylinders, which is not the hottest part of your engine. Your heads are the hottest part. Fire goes in the heads, not in the cylinder. Okay, so... Your uh, the cool tin meter the amount of air going through the cylinders and put more air through the head. So putting more air through the head gets the head to run cooler. Um, on this engine, believe it or not, I do not have a doghouse shroud, and it runs cool. So oil is secondary cooling. Number one cylinder head. Number two oil. I want you to calculate this for a second. It's 90 degrees out, and I, I'm, I'm, if at 96, I'm not going to go 80, okay? I'm not that dumb. But I, well, I was in the morning time, uh, I was going 80 miles an hour for a uh, good 45 miles in this bus. 45, 50 miles. And um, I'm going to tell you what's in it. It does not have, it has a stand up oil, oil cooler. It does not have an aftermarket oil cooler at all at all on it. Um, it does. It has low compression. It has a giant cam, and it has this thing has a 125 main jet, and it's actually a little bit too rich. So, for because it has very low compression, so thinking it's probably six and a half, something like that, rent roughly. I'm just saying. Um, when we did the calculations, it was done wrong, so I don't know exactly how much it was. I know what the deck height is. Oh, I kind of know what the deck height is, but um, I know what size shims are in it. It has 90,000 shims, and it has uh, milled heads, uh, 40 he 40 thousandths milled. So it, it was just what I had. I had milled heads, so I put in extra 30,000 shim in, and it took a little bit too low compression. So anyway... Uh, that's what's in this thing. Um, that's why it runs super cool. And it, you know, you guys can do your own thing to figure this out. Um, I'm just giving you some of my ideas that I did in 1776. This thing doesn't, it's not, that, doesn't have much power. It's not that much power, but it's got a bit of torque and it does pull the weight pretty well. It does do 80 plus miles an hour, um, with 344 gears with a bug fourth gear so if you guys are trying to figure that out um, that's what I did so anyway uh, those are some of the modifications you can do to get your engine to run cooler um, now the other thing is is gearing uh, a lot of people so and then the other thing is tire size so let me tell you the tire size that I have on this bus this has one 14 inch wheels it has stock height it is running 205 75-14s. So that's a lot taller than the original tire. So my gearing is, is really, really high in that thing. So um, one of the other things you can do is you really need to monitor your RPMs at cruise speed. Um, you should be somewhere in the neighborhood between 2200 and 2800 RPMs optimally uh, at cruise. So if your engine's running at 3800 RPMs, you're probably gonna have some issues with it running hot. So those are all things that, you know, I mean, I just know by the sound of the engine, I don't have a tack, um, so I can't tell you the exact numbers, but because I've just been driving one for 30 years, so I know what they sound like um, when they're running too high. Of RPMs uh, I've been mistaken before I had a bus that I burned up because I 
because it had the wrong gears in it. Um, yeah, it had a bug forth in a, uh, a stock straight uh, stock transaxle, and it just burned up the motor. It got too hot, ran too many RPMs in the freeway. So anyway, but those are the types of things um, that you can do to modify your engine. It's those are simple modifications. Um, putting in the full flow oil cool, oil system is good. Also putting in a oil filter as long as it's not the one that sits right next to the muffler. Um, you can have the, the oil filter, the two lines that come out of the oil pump and have them run off to the side and have oil filter that gives you an extra quart of oil. And that helps to keep your engine run cooling or cooler. Um, um, trying to think of anything else that you could do. Um, modifying it, you know, all the basic things are there in the other video that I had, but, um, I'm just trying to think of the other things. Oh, timing never run more than 28 degrees typically well that thing i'm running again that's got the big cam the cam has a certain advance to it when your cam advance is different um, you need to sometimes modify it for that now your typical end goals in your in your uh, i'm trying to think of the, the main cam companies for vw end goal um uh webcam and all those this like 110 120 the and the numbers that fit in there um those things you typically are always going to run the stock timing okay just so you know um that thing is i have no clue what cam that is i just tuned it for it so it'd be nice to know <laughs> there was no spec on it it's it's a number five something uh 510 or something like that i don't know it's I couldn't find any specs on that cam at all. So, but the, but it's giant. It just the, the lobes look like they look like this. They don't go, you know, they're not pointed. They're just round and giant. So it's like a turbo cam. The ones I've seen. I just thought it'd be fun put it in there. So yeah, it does. It does run really cool. So anyway, um, those are the types of uh, things that uh, you can do. To keep your engine running cooler and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.